Here's an idea. Fallout suggests that the transistor is a symbol for peace. This episode of Idea Channel is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace, build it beautiful. If your last couple months have been anything like mine, you have spent hundreds of hours wandering the blighted, irradiated wasteland that is Boston. Oh, no, I mean fictional alternate universe Boston from Fallout 4, not actual Boston. Actual Boston's very beautiful, not at all a kill or be killed fight for survival. I guess unless you're holding up the line at the Dunkin' Donuts during Monday morning rush hour. Anyway, published by Bethesda, Fallout 4 is the eighth Fallout game since the series start in 1997, and they all follow a similar theme based on an alternate universe history where things go poorly for civilization. Confirmed reports of nuclear detonations in New York and Pennsylvania. We need to get to the vault. Now! In the Fallout universe, the resource wars begin in the year 2051. They're a series of bombings, wars, and forceful annexations that occur as a result of dwindling supplies. Most importantly, petroleum and uranium. Where in our world, we abandoned our nuclear-powered hopes and dreams, eventually focusing on computers and electronics, in Fallout, the atom and the great material costs associated with harnessing it reigns supreme. The conclusion of the resource wars comes on October 23rd, 2077 with The Great War, a two-hour nuclear missile exchange between every nuclear-capable nation which leaves the world in ruins. As the bombs are falling, a very few, very lucky people are ushered into underground fallout shelters called vaults. In the game, players take the role of various vault dwellers and travelers exploring the wasteland to see what of pre-war society has remained or been rebuilt. I will be the first person to tell you that wandering around the post-apocalypse collecting bobbleheads and finding cap stashes is a blast, but I'm also curious about the pre-apocalypse. Like, how did the Fallout universe get to a point where the resource wars were unavoidable? The easy answer is, Fallout's writers said so. So perhaps a more interesting question is to ask if Fallout suggests how we didn't end up in such a post-apocalyptic scenario. I think it does, and I think the answer it provides has something to do with transistors, a fundamental building block of modern electronics, integrated circuits specifically, and therefore computers. The long answer involves a lot of history, both alternate and actual. So to talk about that stuff, we're going to go somewhere less stately and a little bit more powerful. In this universe, in our universe, we had a brief radioactive love affair. From the 1940s to the 1960s, we experienced something called the Atomic Age, where the development of nuclear technology led to a widespread infatuation with all things atomic. Radioactive material was going to solve the energy crisis, make water and food cleaner and more nutritious. It was going to bring us to space and cure all disease. Humble uses the most advanced techniques, including atomic science, to work wonders with oil. But after the destruction of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and in light of growing skepticism regarding the safety of nuclear power, our atomic tryst ended up having a brief half-life. In the US alone, there are over a hundred nuclear power plants, many of them decommissioned. This is the Three Mile Island Nuclear Generating Station, which is still in operation, and in 1979 was the site of the worst nuclear accident to occur on US soil. It was one event in a string of many that would end up stigmatizing nuclear power. By the late 1970s, nuclear had become inextricably linked with annihilation in the minds of the public and so our atomic age came and went, leaving behind only a few remnants, one significant one being its design. The industrial design of the atomic age expressed atomic fascination as well as a timely preoccupation with space via a kind of streamlined chrome-plated futurism. Glossy and massive, rounded, gigantic TV sets, giant land yacht automobiles with fins, wings, and domes, bright colors, obnoxious curvature, and 
abstract organic forms contribute to an ostentatious Jetsonian futurism. Except we never got that future and no longer really desire it. Our demands are for hoverboards, network access, and artificial intelligence, not nuclear-powered cars, irradiated superfoods, and plastic pals who are fun to be with. It's a future imagined in the past, and so it becomes a retro future. What Fallout depicts is a retro future future. It depicts what we previously considered futuristic and gives it a full historical progression, along with a full complement of failures and shortcomings. It's a non-romantic rendering of some potential outcomes given how we thought now might look then. The U.S. may still produce 33% of the world's nuclear energy, but culturally we've abandoned our atomic hopes and dreams. Fallout's scientists, engineers, and governments, on the other hand, stuck sometimes quite literally to their atomic guns. They doggedly pursued nuclear technology as the harbinger of progress. And the game shows what some potential outcomes of that process might be. At the start of the Great War, nuclear reactors are found in homes and automobiles, they power advanced machinery, and inform the base-level functioning of society, much in the same way computer chips do in ours. The atom is, to the Fallout universe, what the electron is to ours. Fallout lets players look nostalgically at both a past and a future that we'll never have. Unlike Shadowrun, it's not a warning of what we could become, and unlike Star Trek, it's not some hopeful imagining of a post-scarcity civilization. Fallout provides a view back, but then forward again, to some distant point of critical divergence, and then its outcome. Which may lead one to ask why. Why imagine a future based on something that we didn't do, besides the fact it looks cool? Which may very well be the central reason, but I think we can also find encouragement to understand how and why we didn't end up in the Fallout universe. If we can understand what Fallout suggests that point of critical divergence was, we may be able to find deep within the differences between our world and its world insight into the right choices to make if we're ever faced with such a point again. And there are few differences between the electron future and the atomic future as significant as the number, role, and capability of computers. In the Fallout universe, wandering around the wastelands, there are none of these and an abundance of these. Well, I mean, not this one specifically, but similar computers. This is the NEAC 2203, first sold by NEC in 1959. It's hard to compare processor speeds, but basically the 2203 could perform 4,000 fixed point add operations per second. A modern i7 processor can perform over 200,000 million instructions a second within a much more sophisticated architecture. Basically, to equal one of these, we would need acres of these. We're able to fit so much junk inside such a tiny computer trunk thanks in part to the shrinking size of the transistor, the basic building block of modern CPUs. The more transistors, the more computational operations you can do more quickly, which means the better your computer is at computing. Older computers were large because the technology required them to be so. The 2203, which was one of the first ever transistorized computers, has 1,338 transistors for its main processor and 1,200 41 for its tape controller, and they are massive. Modern computers have billions of transistors, and we can fit 30 million of them in an area the size of a pinhead. To give you a visual sense of this, we have these three transistor wafers. In the manufacturing process, sections are cut from wafers like these and are packaged into CPUs. These wafers are from the 80s to the mid 90s, and you can plainly see the decreasing size and increasing density of the technology. This is a progression that is largely absent from the Fallout universe. The creators of Fallout imply that a commitment to atomic tech displaced development of other technology, most noticeably the transistor. For the most part, Fallout's computers are giant, unsophisticated, or both. The wager seems to be that a preoccupation with reactors, robots, and ray guns may have meant a lack of development for other important, perhaps more compact, technologies. This is a great, though quietly made, statement within the Fallout universe. The vast majority of its technology is huge. 
Cue the guy. Huge! Because the transistor, rather than the atomic reactor, became the linchpin of cutting edge technology in our world, we ended up engaged in a still ongoing pursuit of miniaturization. Because of the transistor and its shrinking size, our technology is always getting smaller. This is something that's nearly impossible to do with nuclear powered technology. In our universe, nuclear tech was and still is big for practical reasons, mostly related to safety. Radioactive material gives off, well, radiation. It radiates. It has to be shielded and cooled if it's to be safe enough for people to be around. And even low emission systems give off heat and lots of it. And you'd need in square footage oodles of it to power anything, but especially, say, a Buick. It would certainly be this beautiful big Buick sedan. Our physicists never solved this problem, but fallouts somehow did. They developed microfusion cells and car-sized nuclear reactors, fusion-fueled electric motors, and even, yes, the occasional android. But by and large, at least before the apocalypse, it all remained big, bulky, heavy, and awkward. Due in no small part, I'm sure, to the size of their transistors, but also the material costs associated with cooling, carrying, shielding, building and housing radioactive material that would have to be around meaty, vulnerable human bodies. Lead, steel, petroleum products, plastics, in everything. It's a great future in plastics. Is it such a stretch then to imagine this very fact exacerbates if it didn't cause the global resource related tensions and eventual world war that led to the apocalypse? It's never stated explicitly, so this gets us pretty solidly into fan theory territory. So it may be more useful and interesting for us to ask how and why we didn't end up annihilated. I mean, our Cold War was 50 years long. Destruction was mutually assured. The Cuban Missile Crisis had our real and actual civilization on the brink of annihilation. How is each and every one of us not a vault dweller. I think Fallout suggests one potential reason is the transistor and its development. The transistor isn't at all the solution to any and every conflict or resource problem. Our own world has resource shortages and labor conditions of those making technology which uses transistors is notoriously nearly apocalyptic itself. What I wonder, though, is if fallout implies a potential for the transistor to unite, where nuclear pursuits divided. After all, nuclear fission, which fuels nuclear power, is the splitting of atoms apart, while the transistor joins streams of electrons together. Poetically, at least, it packs a lot of power in a relatively small package. We should be clear, though. Transistors, computers, and even the internet are just as much technologies of separation, othering, and combat as nuclear weapons. Except, I mean, for the fact a computer isn't a literal weapon. Unless it is. But you're picking up what I'm putting down. The genealogy of all of this technology, like so much technology, leads us inexorably back to war. War never changes, because human beings never change. It's not that as history progresses, even if our technology improves, combat always looks similar. It's that no matter the universe, Fallout, Call of Duty, Mass Effect, or actual, no matter the setting or history, if people are present, so is this type of war. But in Fallout's suggestion that the transistor, due perhaps in part to its ongoing miniaturization, its imagined comparatively minuscule resource drain, may have ameliorated the effects of some global nuclear power strain leading to the apocalypse, we may find some hope and instruction. Transistorized electronics have been about many things. Status, power, and prestige, sure, but also increasingly the enabling of communication, community, experience, expression, even revolution. The metaphorical coming together of the transistor isn't, I don't think, a solution by any means, but perhaps, Fallout tells us, it's a good suggestion. What do you guys think? Does Fallout somehow suggest that the transistor is a kind of symbol for peace or coming together, at least as far as it's compared to nuclear technology?
Let us know in the comments and I will respond to some of them in next week's comment response video. In this week's comment response video, we talk about your thoughts regarding personality quizzes. If you wanna watch that one, you can click right here or find a link in the doobly-doo. One quick announcement, we did finally record those um, Dice-inspired short stories, so those will be coming out this Friday. Uh, that's in two days, uh, so keep an eye out on your sub box and your Twitter and, you know, just keep an eye on all the things that you normally keep an eye on because there's gonna be a video there eventually. Get hype. We have a Facebook and IRC and a subreddit, links in the doobly-doo, and the tweet of the week comes from Nate Matthias, who wrote a really great comment on Metafilter about psychometrics that was inspired by the personality quizzes episode with uh, lots of great links to um, how psychometrics works, um, how people think about it, and sort of related theories. Really good stuff, really interesting. So thank you, Nate, this is great. And hey, in case you were wondering, this episode of Idea Channel is made possible by Squarespace. Squarespace is an easy way to create a website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Squarespace features a user-friendly interface, custom templates, and 24-7 customer support. Try Squarespace at squarespace.com forward slash idea channel for a special offer. Squarespace. Build it beautiful. And last, but certainly not least, this episode would not have been possible without the very hard work of these dedicated vault dwellers. Thanks, team. Wow.